Harley Davidson cannot change the evolution of the motorcycle rider. Period. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one because, actually, I don't think we agree on most of this. And uh, Buckle up, kids. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a topic we've talked about in the past, and it comes up a lot on our Discord. And uh, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure we don't 100% agree. We agree on a few things. But um, can Harley Davidson change... The evolution of the motorcycle rider, meaning we hear a lot about Harley needs to get the younger rider. Right. Harley needs to go after the younger rider. Harley needs to do this to get the younger rider. If they don't get the younger rider, they're going to go out of business because the older rider is dying off. So... So we, we, we agree. There are some things that we agree on. And, I mean, yes, obviously old Harley riders are dying off. But they're being replaced. People are always getting older. Because we're old, always so, getting older. So, so just let me, let me preface this so, with, this is an opinion piece. Yes. Um, and we're <laughs> super excited to hear your opinion after we finish this dialogue in the comments. But I don't think we 100% agree, so this should be interesting. So, go so, ahead. But, so, the whole theory of, you know, now you, you, you can talk about population statistics, right? So, you had the boomers, huge population. Boomers got into their prime, and we're going to talk about, like, what age brackets that is. They bought Harleys. Some of them bought Harleys a little bit younger, because I think 20 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, probably even more than that for them. I think Harleys were a little bit more reasonable than they are now. Even though there were times in the 90s they were very hard to get. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So, but, boomers, big generation, right? And boomers come along and they have Gen Z. That's us. All right? That's the people who are rolling into their Harley Prime now. Mm -hmm. all right? We're a smaller generation. Okay. So, theoretically, the way population rolls, you could argue that. Th there's some panic there. Following us is what, though? Following us are the millennials. Mm. That generation is much bigger than us. Right? So, there's going to be a natural... <laughs> but are they into motorcycles? Well, that's... <laughs> to, to be determined, I guess. But that's the natural ebb and flow of the way a population goes. You have, yeah. you have larger, absolutely. You have larger generations, you have smaller generations, you have larger generations. It it's economy driven. It's it's which, lifestyle driven. It's it's driven by so many things. That's, which, which to me is why that's not necessarily as big a factor as people might want. I mean, it, it just well, it ebbs and flows. I think it's a big factor. It's not a controllable. Absolutely. So so let's. Hit the rewind button. All right. So let's go back to what we, what, what I kind of, and you can correct me along the uh, way, or you can tell me if you think something's different, but right. kind of what we think the, the, the normal evolution of a motorcycle rider is, right? Yes. So here's, I just wrote down some notes, right? So I figured, here's what we got. We start out as kids and teenagers on dirt bikes and quads playing, you know, and getting our first experience with these two wheels, two wheels sometimes four wheels, but whatever, with this kind mm -hmm. of action sport kind of thing, right? As a kid, we have no money, we ain't buying anything, our parents bought us this crap, mm -hmm. all right? So that's where it starts typically, right? So then we evolve into the, you know, later, you know, kind of adult teens into the 20s, and we typically go to sport bikes, you know, street bike crotch rocket type of bikes mm -hmm. right because these you know you're younger you're into the thrill you like the speed that's just kind of typically how it is right you want to go fast you want to look cool so it's sport bikes it's you know all those and i don't even know what those freaking you would know better these makes of bikes because i wasn't i didn't do that right <laughs> so all those types of sport bike street bike kind of bikes right where you're completely uncomfortable and but you know you're going fast, right? 
And then you evolve and you kind of get your late 20s and you hit into your 30s where you might still be kind of on some sport bikes or some of those sport bikes that start to kind of lean towards cruisers, but they're still trying to be sport bikes, right? And you might start hitting some of those cruisers and some of those, you know, Kawasaki Vulcans and, you know, kind of mm -hmm. the Japanese model cruisers. And, you know, maybe even, maybe even you venture into the Sportster, you know, world at that age. At that age. More, and, more reasonable bikes. You could find them used reasonable, nice, like the gateway. So bike. you're at that point where you're early in your career, mm -hmm. you know, you have probably, you maybe have limited funds. You have a, you know, a young family. Maybe you're just starting out. You're just married. You got young kids, whatever. You can't spend a ton of money on this. And, you know, you got people telling you, you got young kids, so you shouldn't ride a motorcycle, <laughs> mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? So that's where you're at there. And then you kind of grow and you evolve into the, you know, later 30s and into your 40s and sometimes even 50s. And now you're getting to that point where you have, you know, an established career maybe or job that you've been in forever and you have some disposable income. And this is where you start venturing into Harley Davidson, that, that big price tag, right, that we, you know, typically can't afford until we get to this point. And we start hitting the soft tails and the heritages and the road kings and, you know, maybe you started at a diner before that, you know, maybe if mm -hmm. you're sh a shorter person. Um, and then, you know, and then you're kind of getting into that touring bike. And maybe it's not even a Harley. Maybe it's an Indian touring bike or an Indian cruiser. But now you're in that world where you can afford to venture into these price tags, Into right? the higher end comfort. Yeah. You know. So that's kind of where it is, you know. And then, you know, I was told not to say this, but then kind of after that, you go into that, you know, you're in your maybe your 60s, <laughs> you're a little older, you're, you know, not quite as cool, or maybe you're just young and have no money and you kind of want to be a Harley Klinger on her, so you go for the gold wing, right? So you're, you're in that category. And you know who this is directed at if you're watching. But anyway, that was, that was just a joke. But so kind of... The point being that no one's, you know, no one really starts at that Harley level. It's it's expensive, you know, and it's a bigger bike. It's not when you're young, it's not as cool. Like right. when you get our age, they're cool, you know. The the, the street glides and the road glides are freaking badass to us. But right. when you're in your twenties, not at all. You want a Hayabusa, or I don't even know what those bikes are. Those I, I know some, I know somebody just a few short years ago who didn't want a tour pack or a lower fairing. Right. 100%, like we evolved. <laughs> I didn't. When I bought a Harley, like I was looking at, I want the classic old school style. So I went with a Heritage, right? I had the old school retro classic look with bags with studs on them. And, you know, yeah, what the heck, man. But, you know, we evolve. We change as right. we get older. And that's that's the biggest moral of this story, I guess, is that we change and we evolve as we get older and, and in our motorcycle riding well, life. Two things, right? I mean, I mean, yes, one, people do change. And, and two, it's, it's the financial aspect of it. And, and, you know, I think those are both agreeables. I think, however, with Harley, they are... They're, they're a sales... All right, hold on. Let me, let me uh, preface this with... That's where we agree. That's that's where we agree. And here's the point and, and, in the story where we start it, to disagree. It, 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 it's not even like we insanely disagree. It, it's with, with Harley, they're they're a sales company. That, that's what they are, right? That they're in business to sell motorcycles. Absolutely. So what does Harley need to do to sell motorcycles? They need to create a need, right? So they need to create a market. And I feel like no. I mean, and there's been bikes like the Bronx that are supposed to be more appealing. There's been bikes, you know, o over the years, like, so Sportsters, the Sportster, yes, water-cooled, more kind of a metric type of a style bike, I think, right? The Bronx is definitely a street fighter, so, you know, more of a younger, I mean, let's be honest, I mean, 55-year-old dudes aren't going out and buying the Bronx when it comes out, if it comes out. And I think it's not it coming out. But... You know, but that that style of bike. About that but anymore. but regardless, they, I, I think their philosophy is they start creating that need young with styling that, although younger people might not be able to afford, and, and you're not wrong there, with styling that would appeal to be to younger people, so that even though they can't afford it, they want it, so that one day they will get it, and and, and that's but. 
by the time they can afford it, right? They no longer want that. They want the freaking touring bike that we're on as old geezers, right? But so it's like it really. But that's where the. Big, I don't know that that has an effect. But that's where their biggest styling changes are. I get it. And this is where we agree or disagree. Like, I don't feel like there's much in the styling department that they can do that's going to secure them a base of young people that are actually purchasing bikes. Because they just, nothing trumps the fact of finances and what you can and can't no. afford. No. Right? right? So they can put out whatever they want. But if it's so much more expensive than the street bikes, the sport bikes, um, you know, that style of stuff, like, you're the just... The Triumphs. The tri like those smaller bikes, those foreign bikes, whatever. Just it's price. I mean, you could be in a very cool Triumph for somewhere between like eleven and fourteen grand. Right. You know. And I what's mean, the cheapest Sportster right now? You know, I don't even know. Which, not to mention, not everybody necessarily jumps right into a Sportster. There's you know dudes that are not getting what's on a, Sportsters. What's a Street Bob? Probably thirteen nine ish. Yeah, I mean they're not cheap. Yeah. This is my point. In saying, and, and this is where I can't, you know, said Harley cannot change this evolution because so much of it, m almost all of it, is all dependent it. on money, money, finances. We all evolve as humans, right? And we start out with no money and we start making a little bit. You can't afford these Harleys. But when you were younger, well, I mean, was there something you wanted? Was there a car you wanted? Not really. Was there a bike? Of course not. I was, I, uh, of, of course I, not. I, I, I'm not a car guy. <laughs> like, there was a couple tanks, but you know, that's because I'm an yeah. army brat. Yeah. But, like, I but, wasn't buying a tank. You know, it, it's like, I, I mean, a lot of people, like, you know, when you're younger, like I, 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 I did, I... You know, I wanted a BMW. Okay. You know, you know what I mean. So when, there were things that I wanted. When there were things that I that I, I thought I wanted at that point that were my I loved. They were awesome. But that even changes as you grow. By the time you can afford anything, that's changed. It changed. But you know, there. But this all goes back to my point. You know, that they cannot change this cycle. Justin, are you grad ninety nine? I'll use him as an example. Yes, he's clinging so, to his youth. He's. <laughs> but his, I mean, he grew up in a motorcycle family. He had, um, and, and he's going to, uh, I forget what he had. But he had an old metric bike. I think, And, I, I and he's a classic type where we're like, you yeah. riding as a kid. Yeah, yeah. You know. So he, he had an old metric example. bike. He had a cheaper, um, it might have been a Suzuki. Um, I'm sure he will correct me in the comments. But it was a older, used, you know, bike. Then, you know, when... He always wanted, you know, a sport tour bike. That was his thing. Want a sport tour bike. Want a sport tour bike. That was, he wanted a sport tour bike when he was in college, couldn't afford one. What happened? He graduated college and then he could afford the store sport tour bike. He bought that bike, mm -hmm. right? He also always, and from, I mean, early age, from the time Buell was out, wanted a Buell. Weird. Everybody's different, man. He so, is definitely different. But got Love a Buell. Buddy. Now we finally have him on a proper Harley. But you, you know it, it's. I think I think that's an that's an oddity. I don't think most people. I, I feel like most people, by the time they can afford what they wanted as a kid, they're at a point where they want something different, right? Mm -hmm. So you never get to, you never like by the time you get to the point where you can afford that whatever that was, that's now no longer what you want because that was just such a small goal like as a child or a younger person and now you want something bigger. So I think our taste changes as we grow and our taste changes as our finances change and that's why my point is Harley cannot do anything to change that regardless of who they try to go after in their advertising in their little tiny changes in their bike stylings. I, I just don't think there's anything they can do. I think it is what it is, and I don't think that's a bad thing. It goes That goes hand in hand with the fact that people say, well, Harley's core base is going to die off, and then they're going to have no one. No, they're not, because the younger people are growing as the older people are dying off, and they're filling that spot. Yeah. Right? And we're fitting into that spot and we're getting to that point. We're older. We're late 40s going into 50. We're filling that void. 
Yep. So they're never going to lose that core that is the 35 to 65, you know, where they sell all their bikes to. They're not going to lose that core because people will continue to grow into that and people die off. That's their spot. Their sweet spot. Those are the people that can afford their expensive ass bikes. And they are expensive. They're more expensive. They are, 100%, man. They're more expensive now than ever. You know? Have. So... You know. I just you can't convince me that they're they're doing short of short of lowering prices or building a bike that comes out that is significantly less expensive. I mean, because because be honest with you, their sportsters, while not crazy expensive to us, mm -hmm. are crazy expensive to a twenty year old. But I, I mean, they are in line with other bikes, though. It's not like. It's not like well, and I'm not saying that other bikes are any different. Any right. other brands are different. I mean, everything. I, with is, this whole point every, of everything, Harley was just because is, we're Harley guys. Everything is in line. I mean, it's not like sure it is. You know, Sportsters are that much. But cheaper what's than but what's a cheap uh, what's Triumph, a cheap sport bike? Crotch you know, Crotch Rocket. I know that's inappropriate. I mean, and somebody's going to be offended and tell me how inappropriate. You're still, you're still, Rice burner. You're still, that was a, that was offensive too. My bad. You're, you're but like, still, what are those prices? I mean, what's a Busa going for? You got to be like fifteen or sixteen thousand. Busa. But I mean, the average you know, schmuck with no money R6? doesn't buy a Busa. R6 is, and I'll have to. I'll have to. What's look, a look cheap this up. end sport bike? Crotch rocket bike, which it cannot be comparable to a Harley Davidson. There's no way. Which would be a six hundred cc bike is going to be over ten grand. Uh, Hang not, on. I'm not buying that for yeah. two seconds. Hang on. That every one of these sport bikes is over 10 grand. These dudes are buying them like hotcakes. There's no freaking way. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Hang on. Don't be pulling up some high end crap. I'm not. Because most I of won't. these jokers out there that are 20 years old are not buying high end stuff. I won't even pull up a leader bike. Listen, bottom line Honda is Honda R6 is 12,199. It's not even a leader bike. Okay. So I mean I don't that's know what a leader bike is. A leader bike's a thousand cc bike. Okay. So, and that's that's a Honda R6. So that's basically your. I'm two, not buying it. Two small. Well, you don't have to buy. It. I mean, you don't have to buy the bike. But I mean, the price is. There, the I'm, I'm just saying, there's there's got to be there's gotta, you know, that's not that, that that can't be the most common bike then. There's yeah. got to be bikes in the five six thousand dollar range. It's got to be. There's got to be. There's got to be. Suzuki Jixxer six hundred. Don't up, scroll up, down. Up. There's prices at the top. Yeah. Eleven four. Eleven four. Well, then it's as simple. Then if it ain't money, then it's style. And there's nothing Harley's going to do to change the style. They're, we're, they're not going to make a sport bike that goes two hundred miles an hour. No. No. Unless you're putting a moonshine. There's no unless nothing. M moonshine. Harley, Harley Davis is not going to do it. They have a brand. <laughs> they have a style. So whether it's finances or it's just dumb youth that likes a certain style, either way, what can Harley do? So tell me what Harley can do to attract a 22-year-old who maybe has a few this dollars. That's my whole point. They make their styling attractive so that when people are ready to that's buy... That's so generic. That's what they go for. That's so generic. Make their styling attractive to the younger people. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that encompass? <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> Know what that That's is. so generic, though, right? But it's 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 all they can do. It's all anybody can do. Well, all I the, mean, well, all the sport bike companies are doing it just fine. So what you're saying is Harley has to make a sport bike. <laughs> just no, I I don't I I I got I, I got nothing for that. <laughs> it's I, a legitimate I mean, question. A, Why a, are you getting flustered? A sports bike is twelve grand, and you could buy sports. They're probably for less than twelve grand. Right. So a twenty year old. Right. So think of yourself at twenty. Right. What am I and, buying? And you're you have a choice of the two for the what, same price. When what I was when I was twenty, I wasn't even getting on a bike, so you're talking to the wrong person. But I I, I don't Neither know. It was I, but I'm just gonna think uh, hypothetically. You know, I, I I mean I don't know. I mean we 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 and we were having this conversation. We hang out with lots of young people who are in the Harley crowd. Well, when I mean I, was, I think it's kind of our world. We don't hang I, out with anybody that's really a sport bike when, rider. When I was when I was younger, everybody had sport bikes. But I feel like sport bikes then were more accessible. Than Harley, but they're still the bigger genre. If you go on YouTube alone, yeah, people like them. People, if like you them. go on YouTube alone and start looking at up like, and I don't know any of them because it's not our world, but right. if you start looking up those sport bike channels, they're way bigger than like ours. They're like, well, yeah, they're huge. It's they're huge channels. So the argument so. comes: What does Harley do to go after that? Those people, and I just think, listen, 
That, that is that is the you're, argument. You're, and you're that's always, what I would love to know because I don't you're, know. You're always going to have people who are going to want an Italian sports car. And you're always going to have people that are going to want to vet. And that's what makes the world go round. True. So, but so then is that basically saying that there's really nothing that Harley no, can I do don't, to I change don't, it? No, I don't think there is because people have anything they can necessarily do to change it. But I think the whole point is they can't just sit by and do nothing. Why? Huh? How long have they been making money? But... <laughs> And they've been and they've been changing. Harley's been changing every ten years, drastic, drastically changing every ten years. But who? What age right? range has been their so, primary buyer in every decade? Well, that's not going to change. Yeah, I mean, that's, right. So I don't really know yeah. that that like what how big of a dent can that younger generation make with the available funds that they have? I think one of the things that's kept Harley going for. As long as, you know, as well as it has, is is how they market. They don't need to market to you. They don't need to market to the 35 to 50 people. Because mm-hmm. those, that's their biggest, that's their biggest core. They need to market to the people 20 to 35. And that's younger. So you think that's what's got them thriving? Well, I mean, thriving's, thriving's a stretch. I, I mean, feel like they're they've num- been, they've been around. They've I feel been, like their numbers haven't been so good lately. They've been around for 120 years, so I mean, it's yeah. you know, I don't, I don't think, I, I think when you look in a oh, post 2020 world, I, I don't necessarily think anybody's numbers are good, and that's probably a, a whole, a whole separate video. But True that. you know, why don't you see, you know. If if people are so in love with metric bikes, how come you don't see? How, how come the metric cruiser market is so much smaller than Harley's cruiser market? You know, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know. That's I don't know what their market is. To be we're honest not, we're so not. I, can't, you, I, well, I didn't go that deep in my research for this video. But I, but I mean, still, you, you you ride around. I mean, you know, you could count twenty Harleys, twenty five Harleys to every every Goldwing to every Venture. You know, when it, especially when it comes, especially when it comes to baggers, the flagship bikes, right? So I mean, in my personal opinion, I think there's a huge leap, and the leap is like they're either riding sport bikes and in that sport sport bike world, mm-hmm. or they're kind of up there in, in the in the Harley Cruiser world and possibly maybe Indian or you know whatever. But I, I think that's kind of like if, if you want to go with like yeah, obviously there's you know some you know here and there there's some different you know yeah. But I feel like that's the bulk of it. I feel like it's the jump is I'm out of the sport bike world and I'm into the Harley world. And that seems to be like kind of where and it's just a matter of what point that gets you to that. And it's whether it's because I'm getting older and it's a comfort thing or I'm getting older and I can now afford a Harley. Yeah. It seems like those are the two biggest things. And I mean, we see people all the time like getting their first Harley, you know, we, 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 we follow and we're involved in a lot of these different Harley dealers, and you see their stuff posting, and there's so many first-time Harley buyers. First time because it's a dream they've been chasing from the marketing they've been exposed to. Well, it's a be- dream that's, they've been chasing. That's my point. But they couldn't get to until they could afford it. Correct. So that's my point. But, all right, kill me today. That doesn't mean that Harley shouldn't I mean, go after them. we all have them. dreams. But that doesn't mean Harley shouldn't go after those people. And to me, it just means that, that they can go after them all they want. They're not going to get them until they can afford to, to buy something. But eventually they get them. But they'd get them anyway. And then when they, then when they get they'd them. they get them anyway because eventually we all, they would all get tired of frigging riding a sport bike from here to frigging South Dakota for Surgeon's Bike Week. Yeah, but what if... What if woo, woo, what so if, you can't... I mean, it's just eventually it's a matter of time. They, gra- they just gravitate to it because their body tells them to. Right. I mean, if Honda had the marketing... And they don't. They certainly don't. Well, their bikes suck. Regardless, if well, Honda, it's a factor. If, if Honda had the marketing, and they had the marketing strategy that that Harley has employed over the last, especially over the last twenty years, you know. So you truly believe that Harley's marketing towards the younger people has been amazing over the last twenty years? I didn't say it was amazing, but it's just been strong. It's I, been I strong. said, I said, it's what drives the dream. That's the point. Uh, well, this one is not going to end in agreement. 
I love you, buddy. But uh, we're not going to agree on this one. You guys tell us what you think about this topic. Can Harley change the evolution of the motorcycle rider? And uh, if so, why? If not, why? Give us some comments because we love the comments. We will definitely... Uh, read and answer them because, well, we got nothing else to do. Well, I got nothing else to do. They're going to be good. So let us know. And if you have not yet subscribed, please think about subscribing. Uh, if you like this kind of content, this kind of chit chat or the riding footage that we put out. And a lot of that's to come real soon here with the weather warming up. Mm -hmm. And uh, last but not least, we need to do a little member shout out. How about... Um, Ken Ruples. Ken Ruples. Ken Ruples. And I don't know what he goes off of on the uh, social medias, but I know him as Ken Ruples. I think his real name is Ken Ruples. His name is Harley Dad. Harley Dad. Is that what, that's what it is on the, yeah. uh, the Grams? Yeah. Um, yeah, Ken Ruples. Another fantastic member and supporter of the channel. Um, I'd love to know how Ken found us. So, Ken, you watch. That's us. a good question. Let me know how you found us. But because the, there are a lot of people like I know this person found us through Monkey, or this person found us through right. so and so, or this right. person found. You know what I mean? There are a lot of people. People may not know that, think that, but there are a lot of people like I know how people found their way to the channel. There's a, obviously a ton of people I don't, but I feel like the people that we kind of like. Ken's extremely we, supportive you know. in the Discord. Yes. And here's a here's a tip. For all of you members that maybe want to get a shout out, be in the Discord because there's a lot of you. We have a lot of people that are in our membership that don't necessarily get on the Discord. And so you're not not to be like rude, but we just don't see your name every day. So we kind of, you know, out of sight, out of mind, right? So Ken's in there every day saying good morning to everybody, talking to everybody, and uh, a huge support of the, of the channel. So thank, thank you, Ken. We appreciate you, man, and uh, uh, thanks. There you what go. Else you got? That's it. That's it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Ring that bell, please, so you know when we upload new videos. Yeah, and, man. Uh, we will catch you in the next one. Yeah.